Hi guys, and welcome to a new chapter for the General Maths course. Or if you're not following General Maths, just hi, how are you? Today we are looking at substituting formulas. My name is Darren Maths Guru, and it is flipping awesome having you along. Have you subscribed to my YouTube channel? Mum, I'm not talking about you again. Of course you subscribe. Yeah, do you know my mum, I think it is the 200,000 views I've just got. Sh but can you maybe help me out? Subscribe, click that button, just lets me know that you're watching. MathsGuru.com is also the website that puts all of these videos in textbook order with downloadable notes and time codes and, and, and exam questions and so, so much more. Again, absolutely free to sign up. Tell your mates as well if you would. Just turn on to your mate now and go, oh yeah, I've just found this guy, it's MathsGuru, it seems pretty good. Yeah, hopefully I'm good. All right, so what are we dealing with today? Well, we're gonna recap how to use substitution to solve for unknown in an equation. You have been doing this for years, all right? But again, I'm just gonna recap these first Eight or nine videos aren't particularly long because a lot of this we're building on what hopefully you already know. And understand the difference between an expression and an equation. Now, as I say here, you've been doing this for years and years and years. And that uh, is grandfather time, looking out for time and making sure that it continues forward. Yes, please excuse the length of this video. It's not very short. Uh, it's not very short, not very long. Substitution, I hate sport, I'm really sorry. It's all just a bit like too intense really, although I do like, quite like going to the MCG and watching, uh, you know, soccer, I know football teams play, even got that wrong. Yeah, so who do I go for? Well, that's a bit of a contentious issue. Are you really interested? Well, at the moment, Richmond, why? Because they've got a really good theme song. This is how invested I am in sport. Uh, it was Collingwood. I uh, generally go with my mates who've got a few teeth missing. <laughs> the whole new <laughs> uh, Who does like with St Kilda? So I sort of bounce around. Yes, I. But the atmosphere, the MCG, when you go watch that footy match, is freaking awesome. So if you ever see me there, just come up and say yo, and uh, you know, uh, shake my hand, and I'll shake your hand, and I'll have a chat about how you doing, because uh, I'd love to to meet you. But when I think about substitution, I think about that guy there with that very pretty coloured board and going, hey, number twenty, get off, and number eleven, get on. Right, so substitution in maths is where we take a letter away from an equation or an expression and we put a number in its place. Now, comes with that, a little bit fraught, but on the whole, that's it. Take a number off, sorry, take a letter off and put a number on. The rest of it is down to this wonderful thing called bid mass. And if you absolutely say bod mass, I am going to crack it. It is not bod, where did bod mass come from? What does O even stand for? At least with my one, it makes more sense. What's well, bid mass? Far more sensible. Brackets, indices, indices, floaty numbers. Now again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, floaty numbers, there is numbers what float. So if we look at x with the floaty two, that there is an index. It's also called a power or an exponent. Why do we do this in maths, do you? I'm so sorry. There's division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. If you know how to use bid mass, it's about doing things in that order. All right, so generally speaking, we like brackets to be done first, then indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Now, the last thing I need you to know about is the difference between an expression and an equation. Now, hopefully you already know this, an equation has an equal sign in it. So if I have something like x plus 4 equals 10, that's an equation. It has an equal sign, and it's something that can be solved. And the language again here is really stupid. When we have an equation, we try and solve it to find the value of x. Coaching. An expression would just be something like x plus 4. There is no equal sign, but believe it or not, I can still substitute in that, but I'm going to evaluate it. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. Barry, when I get hold of him, I'm going to slap him hard. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with Barry, you better not. All right? So here's an example of substituting. And in many cases, when you do these type of questions, you are looking at the context of what the letters stand for and the idea of the question. So, a cost of hiring a windsurfer is given by the following rule, where C is equal to 40 T. Now, between the 40 and the T, I call it a kissy kissy. They are stuck together, there is kissing, as in there is a times plus 10. So I'm gonna write that again as C is equal to 40 times T plus 10. What on earth does C stand for? Well, in many cases, they'll tell you in the question, C is the cost in dollars. And what is T? Well, T generally mass stands for time. So it's the time for how long you've got something, all right? So in this situation, it says, how much will it cost? So that's asking you to find the value of C, right? So your equation is gonna stay C equals. For two hours, oh, what have they told me there? Two hours, that is time. Oh, hold on a moment. They've told me to let T equals two. So I'm gonna substitute out the value of T and I'm gonna put two in its place. Now, the reason I put the times in here and I've just copied it in because I always tend to do formula, 
substitute, and then solve. The reason I do it that way is a lot of people sadly do silly things like this. 40t plus 10, they go c is equal to 40, they put the 2 in there, plus 10, and they get c is equal to 412. You notice their silly mistake? Yep. They've just substituted in the t, they've forgotten it's a times in between, and then it gives you the wrong answer. But doing it this way, I know that 40 times 2, bid mass first, are there any brackets? No. Indices? No. Division? No. Multiplication? Yes, I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to do my 40 times 2, which gives me 80, plus 10. And yes, I could have done this all in my head, but that's not the point of doing this, right? C is equal to 90, so therefore the cost is equal to $90. ka -ching. Easy. I should go go. Here's another example. The formula looks more disgusting, yes? The perimeter of a shape can be shown by the following formula. P equals 2L plus H brackets 1 plus pi on 2. Don't worry about it. You can put all of this stuff in your CAS and life is good, yeah? In this formula, L is the length of the rectangle and H is the height. Well, okay then, so L is length, H is height. Find the perimeter. So because we want to find the perimeter, we know we're going to find P is equal to, to one decimal place if L equals, so they're saying substitute L as 16.1 and H as 3.2. So we're going to take the letter L out and put in 16.1 and where I see a H, I'm going to put in 3.2. So let's do that now. 2, well 2L is 2 times L, 2 times 16.1 plus h of 3.2 times, because we know between a number and the bracket is a times, 1 plus pi on 2. Now, as I've said there, remember, pi is a number. It's a number on your calculator that you can effectively put in. So, I've done my formula. It's already given me my formula. I've done my substitution. Now I'm going to do the solve. How am I going to do that? By actually putting it into my CAS calculator. So if you'd excuse me for one moment, just, you know, entertain yourself, if you will. And the great thing about my CAS calculator is I can actually do it as it is with the brackets. I'm going to do 2 times 16.1. No, I'm not because my calculator hates me. Let's try that one again. And the fact is on there. So we'll do 2 times, what did I say, 16.1. We're going to add on to that 3.2 times. Open a bracket. 1 plus... Uh, what am I going to do then? Pi. Where is my pi button? Keyboard. Pi divided by 2. Close my brackets. Hit enter. And out comes 40.4. So my calculator shows me 40.42654825. But because the question wants me to round it to a particular accuracy, and it says here one decimal place, then I would know that my perimeter is equal to 40.4, and don't forget my units. They've given me my units as centimeters, and so there we go. Now, if you're not sure how to round to decimal places, you have to work it out. If you're not sure about significant figures, you have to work it out. This is so, so important, because so many people lose so many marks in exams now for not rounding to the correct uh, accuracy. I'm done. Told you it wasn't very long, not very many questions. Have a go, practice, make mistakes. I can guarantee you if you're going to make mistakes anywhere, it's with bid mass, all right? Make sure that you put the kissy kisses in and the times is between the brackets and the numbers, and you're going to smash this. I'm Darren. Thank you very much for watching, otherwise known as MassGuru. It's been good to see you. If you can, subscribe. Head over to MassGuru.com and let your mates know that I am here. If not, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.